Welcome to the I Heed Sports Roundup. I'm Sam Everard, Radio Man Fantastic. The time is nearly upon us as the I Heed football team finish their final preparations for the start of the Uniche Championships. A minimum of three matches await, the first on the Wednesday, the 19th of March at 19.20. The venues, the Centre Sportif, Boot de Monde, and a big local turnout in support of the team would be fantastic. The Institute has been feverish with excitement for this first game. Little else has been talked about in the canteens and lecture halls, in the libraries and on nights out. Right? The team has, of course, duly responded to the excitement, organizing structured and tactical practice sessions. Last week, they even practiced corners for 10 minutes before returning to a kickabout. Some voices of dissent from the support base have criticized managers Ferdinand Marbury and Oscar Alexandris for allowing the fame of Iheed football superstardom to go to the team's heads. Rumors remain that the potential for semi-erotic team calendars and similar such memorabilia have been extensively discussed in the dressing room. Some fans have questioned the seriousness being shown by the players. Some believe that there is room for optimism for Wednesday's match, despite the less than professional preparation. In case you don't know the team, the reason for such optimism, here's some background. There's Elliot Backer, centre-back extraordinaire. He once played for a team that actually got sponsored by someone. He's the only one. Some have commented that Elliot is the only one in the team to play the David Beckham role, i.e. he uses his boyish good looks to bring in the money and the ladies. But since the team remains without either, his usefulness has recently been questioned. Mads Ringless is the engine of the team, seemingly never tiring. Mads rarely runs or plays anything in a near coherent manner, but to his credit, he is the only one of us to actually have a YouTube goal. Albeit, it was a slice across the net. Sorry to say, Mads. That was a slice. Alberto Gamboa and Ludovico Marinelli make up the European flair pair in the middle. Both struggled to go for more than five minutes without needing to sit down and take a breather. Thomas Garzon and Victor Kumaritz could also be accused of similarly. They could all have made it in the big leagues if only they could run the lengths of their own bodies. Chris Oliver Kahn Nolan is between the sticks. His similar appearance to Oliver Kahn is about the only thing they have in common. Steve Cho is at the attacking wing and the only player I've ever seen who smokes before, during, and after the match. Well, he's not the only one. Of course, there is Chris Jenkins, the heart of the midfield. He's known for knees that are likely to give out at any turn and for mastering the skill of the perfect sideways 10-yard pass. An unmissable spectacle on the football field, Jenkins is famous for tripping over his own lanky limbs on a regular basis, and it is rumored that he practices celebrations in front of the mirror every morning. Those aren't just rumors. I've seen it. Hunjin Lee, an industrious left back. He has never been on time for a training session in his life and takes 15 minutes to change into his boots. Impressive. Lucas Meyer and Matthias Musi make up the indigenous Swiss part of the team. Matthias is known for taking the best game on the team and for his over the top celebrations. Lucas straddles the superstar lifestyle of part time football and part time reggae DJ. When the inevitable win comes, Lucas will be organizing the party. And I think he does birthdays. Captains and managers simultaneously, Ferdinand and Oscar play the good cop, bad cop roles. Oscar tells the team they are great when everyone knows that they aren't. Ferdinand occasionally plays like the World Cup is on the line. We'll see how this relationship works on the field. A bad result in the Wednesday day and mutiny is a real possibility. And of course, Kara Charbonneau, goalkeeper, PR specialist, tactical genius, and soccer mom. Kara's range of abilities are never ending and her provision of fruit at halftime has become a thing of legend. There are many other players on the team, all equally as unprofessional and questionably talented. You'll get to know them over the next few weeks of reporting. However, despite these weaknesses, and despite the last training practice consisting of more posing for photographs, pretending to play, than actually playing football itself, spirits are high in the dressing room. Let's hope for a good turnout on Wednesday night, whether it's to watch the team either fulfill the dream of becoming Uniche champions and revel in the glory we will all adorn on them, or fall spectacularly into a massive, embarrassing, and shameful defeat. One's more likely than the other. Either way, it'll be some fun. Keep following Touche for post match reactions, and I'm Sam Everard, Radio Man Fantastic, and you stay classy, Geneva.